See, those are the lights that came on to tell me about this issue. Um, your ABS traction control and your hill start assist light come on. It was uh, intermittent for a while. It would come on and then turn back off and be fine and then come back. Um, and finally, it just stayed on all the way. And uh, that's what led me to investigating this a little further and finding my broken tone ring. So once I went back there, this is what I discovered. This is my uh, tone ring that sits on your back axle had uh, cracked and it was sitting you know like this around the hub so it was having a dead spot and it was a little off uh, distance so it was cutting into my uh, sensor a little bit as well so I just snapped it off so tools you're gonna need for this job that are a little special uh, I'll have some information in the description about which socket to buy if you buy um, certain ones the inside bore here is gonna be too big able to slide in it'll get stuck and then you're gonna scratch up everything so the one that um, I'm using is from Napa you can be able to get it in store and then I'll link another one online you'll be able to get off Amazon um, it's a little less expensive and a better quality but you're gonna have to wait so I buy it ahead of time um, yeah you want to get I'll link which ones to get and then a few parts obviously you're gonna need your new tone ring I'll put all the part numbers in the description Gonna need a new hub seal, a axle shaft seal, and Ford recommends replacing the bolts that hold the axle to the hub. So I bought these; they were like a uh, buck fifty each, so actually cheaper than the front ones, even though they're like three times as big. So that makes sense. Um, other tools that is probably gonna maybe not need, but be helpful is. Uh, caliper wind back tool in case you have trouble getting the caliper and brake off you need to push it in it'll get you to set it right because these uh, caliper pistons you can't just push in you need to twist and that's what this does and then to get your hub off if you live in a nice you know California no salt place you can probably just use a pry bar and pull it um, but this is an actual uh, slide hammer kind of hub grappler kit so you can press it against the axle to force it out or you can attach the slide hammer and knock your hub off and uh, I'll show you that later All right, then to jack it up the jack spot is here on your main axle And you really really along the tube You're able to put your jack and push this up and then I'm gonna put the jack stand right underneath the leaf spring here on the main tube as well um, the axle housing just make sure to move your uh, ABS sensor and uh, brake line out of the way before you push that up. You don't want to get them pinched between your jack stand and the axle housing. see what we're what we're after here so right here you can see that empty spot that's where that broken tone ring came from your wheel speed sensor is underneath here kind of sits like that and uh, reads that tone ring as it goes around so that's the reason we gotta do all this uh, hub removal is to get to that tone ring right there because there's no other way to get to it all right next we're gonna take off the uh, caliper bracket bolts We've got one here and one underneath down here you can't really see in the photo but you'll be able to see whatever it's holding that this caliper to the knuckle here that uses a 15 millimeter all right so for the bottom bracket bolt you're not able to use your regular uh, socket I wasn't able to get it between the uh, bolt here and the bracket for the parking brake so just use a 15 mil uh, crescent wrench slide that on there and then just use the uh, little trick I can show you. But most of you know it. Yeah. Like that. And I'll grab it and you can push down here. It'll pull. You'll get a longer lever. You can move that bolt out. All 
All right, so now we've got the bracket caliper off. A little easier said than done. My rotors have a bit of a lip on the back side, so they didn't want to slide off too easy. <laughs> Had to push it back and forth a few times, and then uh, I was able to slide it off, and then uh, suspend with the bungee cable. Up around here is kind of how I did it. Just kind of holding it on so then there's no uh, tension on any of the hoses here. They're all nice and nice and loose, so we don't have to worry about that breaking. So now we're gonna start pulling this part off. We've got our big bolts here, and then we'll slide our axle out. All right, well, I just had an adventure for about an hour. Pretty par for the course for these northern cars. Uh, looks like someone had tried to do this at one point, uh, or something back here, and gave up because they stripped out, rounded off one of these nuts, and it was quite seized in there. So what I ended up doing was getting a sacrificial socket, one size too small, and hammered that on there so it would grab the stripped out threads. And then I had to crank it back and forth for about 20 minutes to get it to finally break free. I was spraying it with some uh, PB blaster every few minutes, and eventually it popped off. So now, I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest of these off. None of the other ones look stripped. It was just this one. I think somebody got to the first bolt, messed it up, and then quit. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this out, and then we'll take out the axle. <laughs> Baby. All right, so what I did to get the rotor separated from the knuckle, I threaded in the old bolts that I'm planning on replacing because um, your hub has no threads. The threads just go into the rotor. So I threaded these back in, smacked them all with a hammer, used a bit of a air hammer on the threads just kind of going around. And as you can see now, it's separated all the way around. So it took a little smacking, a little hitting, you know, rust fall off like all the time. And uh, now, go ahead and separate that out. We can work on pulling out the hub. All right, so now that the rotor's back off, you can see it kind of wiggly. Um, I have to clean up the little spaces here in between. Um, just the rust buildup is not letting the rotor slide out how it's supposed to. So I'm just gonna hit that with some steel wool, some Brillo pads, hopefully it'll clean it up enough to be able to pull it out. Gotta love rust. 
Alright, so while this is all still covered up, got the rotor off, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just clean everything up since it's still covered and sealed on the back side because I don't want any you know, contamination getting into the bearing if once I pull this out and there might be a little bit exposed. I don't want to be wire wheeling a bunch of rust and stuff off there. So I'm going to do that now, clean it up as best I can with some uh, steel wool and Brillo pads where I need. Get this nice and ready. <laughs> I was going around the tone ring and you can see these little like bumps, kind of like out ridges there on the surface here that we're going to be putting the new tone ring on. I think those are old pieces of the tone ring. And so what I'm doing is I'm just taking a flathead screwdriver, kind of setting it on those pieces and hitting the back of the hammer and they're chipping and flying right off. So they get us a nice smooth surface to put the new one on and then uh, sand it down so it slides on good. And uh, another thing is these are uh, left-hand threads on the driver's side of the vehicle. So it's gonna be righty-loosey instead of righty-tighty. So another thing I'm gonna measure here is how much torque it takes to uh, loosen the nut um, because the re-torquing procedure is a little odd and I just kinda wanna see a ballpark. They say not to go over 25 foot-pounds for the final torque. Um, so I just wanna see what it's set to because it's based off of how much force it takes to pull on this and get it to rotate and I don't really have a good tool to use um, some people in the forum have recommended to me some methods um, I can explain later but I'm just gonna try to get a ballpark using my torque wrench in the loosening mode So that didn't even reach uh, 10 foot-pounds, so when I put it back together, I'll probably put it um, in at the final torque of 10 foot-pounds. Didn't quite get it to click before it uh, started to move. Alright, so we got the grappler set up. I have a cup sitting on the main uh, interior axle since that's not going to be moving. Grappler on the outside of the hub. I'm just going to tighten this up. Hopefully it'll start to pull it out.
Kind of came off in two pieces, but should be able to come out all as one. You can see that, so all as one piece there. But I popped out the middle because it just fell out basically, and then I had to do that hammering around to get this outer piece out. All right, so got that seal pulled out. And then uh, inside you have your inner bearing sitting. You can just pull that out, it's all one big unit, nothing should fall apart. And so now all that's left in here is metal races and uh, we should be able to just spray all this out and clean it up with some uh, brake clean, a little bit of Brello pad action just to clean up all these surfaces so the new stuff goes in with a nice good seal. cleaning you want to have it something like this so that's the uh, ceiling surface for your wheel seal that inner one is your ear uh, race for the bearings you want to make sure that doesn't have any big gouges or heat marks that looks like you know purple and blue so that means you probably need to replace your bearings and those races and then that's your outer wheel bearing race down there at the very bottom you want to make sure that's all clean and perfect as well. That chunk in the middle is just cast metal, so you don't have to worry about getting that super pretty. You just want to make sure all these surfaces that are either sealing or having a bearing writing on them, it's going to be perfect. So we'll go through right one more time at the end and make sure we don't have any of those little fuzzies left over from our towel and get it all perfect before we drop the bearing in. All right, so now we're going to put this all back together. So get a little bit of your gear oil. Um, I updated mine to the 75W140. In the rear end it comes with a, a 90 weight but um, this was recommended in the updated vehicles they all switch to this even though it's the same rear end so when i did my service i switched it out as well let's go ahead and just put some gear oil down along this race just to pre-lube it up a little bit you don't want it going back together dry <laughs> All 
Alright, you're going to lube up your new seal. And just put some around the top edge. Make sure nothing catches on the way in. Alright, so I have this bearing cup tool. Otherwise, if you don't have that, you could just use, you know, something flat. Just go around nice and easy with a mallet. It should work all right. And then just keep tapping till it seats all the way to the surface just like how it looked when you first got it. Shouldn't be really much of a gap at all between the bearing and the new lip. And you can take your tool off, and you get a nice new seal. All right, now time for the main show. The reason we're here is this tone ring. So like we showed earlier, tone ring goes here on this lip. So we're gonna do a quick little spray down with some brake clean. And we'll put a little bit of brake grease on that to help this tone ring slide on. So just keep lightly tapping it all the way around. Make sure that it seats fully against the edge of the rim there. You can see it's pretty far down. I've been hitting it for a little while now. It hasn't really moved at all. And it's uh, an even distance from that top edge of your uh, seal to the ring. So it's at least all the way even. Take our newly rebuilt hub. Got the new seal, new tone ring on there. Wheel bearings in there. Let's slide this back in. So we're all smacked in. This is about the distance I got. The hub kind of like hangs because it's not, you know, fully supported by inner bearing. But about that much gap should be there. It kind of covers up all the new stuff that we uncovered, you know, like the clean metal. Um, so that's the uh, new seal that you see that shiny metal on the end. And it seated all the way up to where the metal was exposed before. So I think this is good enough. Really all that matters is that it's far enough in for that seal to be pressed onto the clean part of the axle to keep the oil in, and that it's far enough in for this wheel bearing and nut to be torqued to the right spec. Great. 
grab your bearing. Add it in a little Ziploc. Do a quick inspection, just make sure nothing's wrong. That has a little barb you can see on it. Match that up with the slot. So now for the torquing method. So the first one is going to be 98 foot pounds, uh, lefty tighty, while slowly rotating this. So as you're torquing, you know, rotate the hub because what this is doing is to make sure that outer bearing, you'll probably see it when you're doing this yourself, um, as your hub moves up and down that bearing, since it's tapered, you know, like this, it kind of starts to pull out. So you have to kind of push it back in, tighten up the nut. But as the weight sits there, the bearing kind of wants to pull, like shoot out again. So what you're doing when you're rotating your hub while you're going to be torquing this is going to be making sure that bearing gets seated in nice and perfect. So the first round is 98 foot pounds. Then you're going to back it off 180 degrees. And then I'm going to go to about 10 foot pounds for the final um, locking of the nut, which is about what it was when I took it off. And the spec is 12 inch pounds of rotational torque, which is if you had something here and you were able to pull down with 12 inch pounds of force on this is how much effort it would take to move the bearing. So I don't really have a good way to measure that. So I'm just going to go with how it was when I took it apart, which was a little under 10 foot pounds on the nut. All right, so now we're going to torque the axle nut. So this is going to go to 98 foot pounds. Um, so you got to grab your special socket. Make sure to push in while you're torquing it, and then we're going to rotate this while we do that as well, and then give it a couple turns once it's at that 98 foot-pounds to make sure that bearing is fully seated in the race. One little quick tip, uh, I had to go run to O'Reilly's and rent their torque wrench because, I don't know if you can see, see how that says torque left or right? My torque wrench only torques righty tighty. So, uh, you're going to need to do this. You got to get make sure your torque wrench has a spec and it'll click going left because these are lefty tighty screws, left hand threads. So, without further ado, All right, now it's time to uh, clean up the rotor and put the rotor back on. If you've got a new rotor, you don't just do this step. Alright, now it's the 
uh, grab the rotor, slide that over the face, and uh, stick it on. We're gonna clean this up with a little bit of brake clean real quick too. Probably have to give that a few hits from the back to uh, get that seat all the way flush. But I'm gonna wait till we slide the axle in. We can do that. Alrighty, getting close to the end here. Now we're just gonna replace the axle seal, which lives right here on your axle shaft we pulled out earlier. I'm gonna try to use a screwdriver to pop it out. Needle nose pliers are usually a little easier to get, but. You know, pinch it a little bit, be able to scoop it out. There we go. This one looked pretty good. I probably could have reused it, but it's a little stiff compared to the new one. It's real pliable, so might as well replace it. Do a quick spray down with some brake clean and lube up the new seal and slap it in. Gonna lube up this with your same gear oil you bought and slide this up over the top and slap it down here. Alright, so now it's all lubed up to make sure it doesn't rip when we go to pop it back into the inside of the hub. And uh, that one was much tighter than that one. That one I was able to just kind of pinch and you're able to see it made that big bubble. This one, right as you put it over the edge, it snapped in. So this is a much you know, tighter seal. So I'd recommend replacing it for the six bucks it was. That way you don't have any gear oil leaking on your brakes and causing them to smoke and maybe lose your brakes. All right, so the nuts retorqued for the inside of the hub. Uh, brake rotors on, cleaned up, and anti-seized. Now we're gonna wipe off the shaft of the axle as we slide it in. Then we'll throw the bolts in, torque it down. We're almost home free. All right. The only part you gotta worry about having this lubed up is the oil seal like we covered, and then the splines down here to make sure that when you go to slide it into your differential, it's not getting hung up on anything. Other than that, let's get her started. You're gonna hit your differential there. You have to kind of lift up, move side to side. There we go. Boom. And then what I'm doing there is on my uh, hub. It's a little hard to see now but I scratched where there's a bolt that goes through. And then on the same uh, section of the hub, it's kind of hard to see now since we've cleaned it so many times, but those are where I put the scratches. So I just line those back up just to make sure if there's any kind of imbalance in this that they corrected by the positioning of something internal. Um, you're not gonna upset it when you put it back together. So now get it all like that. And now it's in the differential, and you just gotta do the last little shimmies. 
there we go. Seated all the way home, the seal popped in, had a nice little pop as it went in, so you're not having to worry about the seal maybe getting caught and squished somewhere. Had a nice crisp pop in there. spec for these are 50 foot pounds for each in the star pattern and an additional 90 degrees and I have a specific tool that lets you measure angle and I'll show you how to use that once we get there. Now to get the additional 90 degrees, I'm going to use an uh, angle torque gauge. This is like 10 bucks at AutoZone. You basically just put your socket in one side, this little bar gets stuck on a wheel nut so it doesn't turn, and then it's able to measure as the internal splines move, the outside stays fixed and it'll turn the gauge. stick the little knob into the next bolt hole is able to hold the dial nice and square so it's able to get 90 degrees additional torque so now all that's left is to finish up the brake job basically all right so now we have the bracket off this is what we're after so we're going to take these little hardware pieces off clean underneath relube them put the brackets back on clean and relube those then your slide pins, we're gonna pop these out and uh, re-lube those. So, you know, normal brake clean and brake grease. Yeah, we'll get these all straightened up. Just use something softer like a Brillo pad. You don't want to scratch up the surface that the pad um, ears are going to be riding on. So just a little Brillo pad and uh, brake clean should be plenty to get these freshened up. Slide pin, just pop right out like that. Make sure 
sure to put these back in the holes you get them from because they're not the same. This one has that little black section on it. Okay, so you're gonna clean your bolts up, put a little uh, anti-seize on them, and we'll put our bracket back on. All right, so caliper bracket bolts, you're gonna torque to 85 foot-pounds. All right, so as you can kind of see right now, the uh, slot that we're showing, it needs to be centered on the caliper. So you don't want that slot, once you're done twisting, to be facing down or up because your interior brake pad has a little nub right here. You can see that slots into that. And so if you have your pad facing the wrong direction, that's not going to be able to, you can actually kind of see the imprint on my used pad. So, from the, so that's from your caliper and that little slot goes into the slot of your caliper. So if you don't align those correctly, your pad's not going to go on and you're not going to know why. So that's a quick tip. Uh, I only have to go, you know, I'm only going to probably do one or one turn um, in because I'm using the same pad. So the caliper's at about the right spot. I just want it to go on easier. Uh, and you're going to turn this knob here, but these are pretty hard to push in. So you can use that trick again with the wrench. Just, uh, yeah, like that. Since we're going to be trying to turn it this way, let's get caught on it. And I'll have a lot more leverage to pull on this. So it'll be a lot easier on you. All right, let's get it done. So now we got our brake pads cleaned up. Just went around with a little bit of Brillo pad and brake clean, cleaned off the ears and the back plate. You're gonna grease them up. Now, we're gonna put our caliper bolts in, uh, torque these to 23 foot-pounds. Uh, I like to put a little bit of lo blue Loctite on them as well.
I'm going to do is I'm going to go push on the brake pedal, make sure that the piston is lined up with the pad correctly, and once it does that, should all sandwich in nice and tight. So throw the car in neutral, take the braking, uh, parking brake off. Let's go ahead and slide this around. All right, now go ahead and throw your wheel on, torque your lug studs to 148 foot-pounds, and uh, take it for a test drive. You're all done. And then you can see on the live data there, those are all our wheel speed sensors. Before with the broken tone wheel, you were seeing kind of one that was jumping and having a dead spot. And now you've seen they're all moving nice and smooth. The uh, value at the bottom is just our RPM, just to make sure that we're tracking live and it's not frozen or anything. I just use that as a comparison. So we'll go on a little bit longer of a little drive here. All right, and then the very last thing you're gonna wanna do is top off your uh, diff fluid. So this is your uh, fill plug, just uses a 3 8 ratchet. We'll just put a little bit more of this in there. How's well, it coming out? Ah, so that's what you want it to do once you know it's full. So I think we're good.